Women's Month is a tribute not only to the thousands of women who marched on that day back in 1956, but also a tribute to the pioneers of the women's movement in this country, dating back to 1913, when women like Charlotte McClague led the way in establishing the NC Women's League and encouraging women to engage in the struggle for freedom. Well, this year, men have been called upon to join the struggle against gender-based violence. Minister of Women in the Presidency, Umau Susan Shabango, made the announcement while marking the start of Women's Month at Teddy Motsetso House out in Hatfield in Pretoria. Well, she's right here in studio with us to tell us more about what the department plans to do to deal with the challenges that women face as we celebrate women this month. Minister, a very good morning to you. What an honor. Thank you so much for joining us. Morning, morning. Thank you. All right. Maybe let's start here. What plans have you got to deal with some of the more prevalent challenges uh, that, uh, that are faced by women on a daily basis, Minister? Well, the first thing is uh, violence against women in our society. And I think it's so prevalent now. And where we are, while celebrating Women's Month, we're facing the challenge of blocking women advancing. Those are some of the challenges we're facing. But also, I must also say it's about ensuring that women can participate in the economy of the country. Mm. Because if you are unable to make sure women are economically empowered, bring back their self-esteem, you will not be able to advance and create an equal society in our country. So this month, is we celebrate the women of 1956. Mm -hmm. It's also about drawing strength from their strength, making sure that we learn from them. But also as women, as the society of South Africa, we realize that it is possible, it's doable, despite the major challenges which we are facing. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to be here today to say, whilst we have challenges of violence against women, whilst we have challenges of continue to make sure that the economic empowerment of women becomes a critical issue. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to achieve that? We can only achieve that by coming together in various partnerships, in ensuring that the churches are there on a daily basis, a Sunday today. Yeah. Churches must talk about violence against women, but not talk to women alone. Also talk to men because Absolutely. They men are the perpetrators. Are the perpetrators. Yeah. So it's important for them to change. And we call upon men to, to make sure that they join various or participate in various men's forum, which are now, I am um, happy that they've come forward. We have what we call Boys to Men, mm -hmm. Sonke Justice, Men for Life, Brothers for Life. And recently we've seen the hashtag, the Not in, my name, Not in yes. my Name movement be created, especially by young men. So it also shows that whilst we're facing this mammoth task, but we see various formations which are worried in making sure that we fight the violence against women. But I want to also stress, if men, good men, don't come forward to raise their voice, it means they are also accomplices Absolutely. in the violence against women. So we need them. But we don't also need them just to fight violence. We also want them in the empowerment of women. Because as we speak today, the majority of management in many companies is still, it's in, still it, men. Yeah. And therefore, if we say we have to change that, men themselves must commit in ensuring that they say change their attitudes, but also they embrace women in ensuring that women can do better. Mm. But Ma, what is still uh, uh, you know, missing with the transformation of women in, in, in an equal society? What still needs to be done and by whom? By all of us. It's not a woman's agenda. Mm -hmm. It's a societal agenda. It needs men, it needs women. And what we need to do is for men to reach out to women. We're not saying they must create space by ensuring that uh, they pull any other women. Women currently, as I speak, are very competent. We have lots of capable women who can compete fairly. But what we need is ensuring that they are given an opportunity. They are identified not on the basis of being women, but on the basis of their ability, their Absolutely. capability. Mm. Because we have professional women, we have women in various areas. And now the advantage is that even in areas where women were never there, because of the, our democracy, now we have geologists. Uh -huh. We have many, many women experts in various areas. Recently we have actuarials who are women. So what we need they must be treated fairly. Mm. You know, on um, Friday, we had a panel of, uh, of 
a, a panel of discussion around the issue of empowerment of women and the capability of women. One of the issues was saying men can be identified for jobs and in their strength, even their weaknesses, but they will still be given that opportunity and be recognized yeah. on the basis of their strength. Mm. But when mm. it comes mm. to women, women who are strong, they'll also identify that, but then start discounting on the basis of the weaknesses instead of saying, let's consider the strength they have, their capability, their ability to do the job. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've got to look at. And I must also say as a country, whilst there's still a lot which you have to do, we must also commend the women who are successful. Recently, Judge uh, President Maya, uh -huh. now the first judge- the Constitutional Court, yeah? Not Constitutional Court, Court of Appeals mm -hmm. in Bloemfontein. First one, president, leading. We must acknowledge that mm -hmm. and see her as a role model and mentor for more and more young women. So all the women who are successful, we've got to see them as role models and then to say also say, if they can make it, any other young woman is possible. Ma, there's also this issue, I mean, we have to discuss this, of women that work against each other, should you put them into those uh, leadership positions. I mean, what do you say to those women that you have empowered to take the lead and bring others up, but keep pulling others down? Well, I think it's high time for us to identify those weaknesses, because they might be doing that unconsciously, mm. you know? So we've got it's to be conscious. It's a silent cry, yeah. It's a silent cry, but also it's about them thinking that they're doing well and it's good for them to be alone. It can't be that. We've got to start ensuring that the pipeline doesn't break. We make sure that that chain continues to advance the interest of women by pulling those below them. Not only that, mentoring. Mm -hmm. And mentoring does not mean you've got to go to workplace, mentor. Mentor your neighbor's child who's a girl child. Mm -hmm. Inspire that girl child because we need more role model, more women mentors. Because that's the only way we can break this particular stereotype of thinking that if I'm there alone, it's fine. Mm. You can't be fine until you ensure that there's a pipeline towards your, what you are doing. All right. Ma, let's talk about this. I mean, uh, uh, in speeding up those issues of uh, inequality, what are some of the, the, the active measures that your department has in place, and in particular when it comes to, to, to the workplace, to try and speed up the transformation and inequality when it comes to who gets the certain positions? Is it a woman versus a man? Well, I must say that um, we have various programs, we have dialogues, we also have partnered with private sector in making sure that women can be placed, but very critical, which we're not using, mm -hmm. it's the employment equity, mm. because our responsibility is to monitor and oversight whether companies, especially the private sector, they are able to implement the employment equity. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing, we are going to make sure that together with the Minister of Labor, she has, she has recently published the report of the employment equity. Yeah. We're going to look at how do we strengthen that? How do we make sure that there are punitive or corrective measures which are put in place? She's doing that, I must say, she's doing a good job mm. in making sure that employment equity, it's not just a paper, it's enforced but it's upon. a living yeah. document in addressing and ensure that it redresses the past. Mm. And we also, working with private sector, I'm very happy. PwC has just released another report, a, their research on the employment equity and also parity. So we're working with them and we're going to use their report to set targets, not just ticking boxes. Mm. What are the gaps? One of the gaps which has been identified, it's employment, it's parity in the workplace. That's true. And the biggest challenge which we have is that um, when there's a CEO who's a man, the salary is good, but when you come in to replace, they drop the salary. Yeah. So they say, but I'm doing you the are same job exactly, as him. you're lesser important. So these are the issues mm -hmm. which we're going to, we're working on and we're going to continue to do that. And one of the critical issues which I am saying, we're going to name and shame companies for doing that. Absolutely. Because you can't say time. all of a sudden, instead of topping up, you decide to drop the standard because it's a woman. Mm -hmm. It's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Look at the capability of the person and make sure that you appreciate the value 
she adds in the job environment. So those are the issues which we're looking at. And the other area which we are doing now, we commission a study to look at opportunities in DTI mm -hmm. and how far has DTI gone in making sure that women also have access to incentives, grants. And in that way, that's the purpose of saying, what are the weaknesses? Because we can pass good laws, but if the implementation plan is not there, we will not be able to be successful. In 2015, we published the status of women in the economy. No one came out and say, You've, you're making a mistake mm. or you're not telling the truth. Yeah. The best in the world. And now the president said we must monitor the economy cluster. Yeah. How are they implementing the status of women? So very soon we'll be coming up with a report okay. from my colleagues, whether they've delivered or not. And what are they doing? Because it's not my responsibility. Yeah. What are they doing in ensuring that women can be there in the economy, but also part of the mainstream? The 30% procurement in government, but also in the private sector, we're going to be doing a study to say whether we're making progress or, we tick, or people are ticking boxes. Mm. Because we can say people have achieved. Meanwhile, it's ticking the boxes. Yeah. And fortunately, coming from where I come from, in the mining sector, being part of that sector for a while, with the various transformation agendas we've had, I can understand and I know and I can tell when it's just a ticking box mm. or instead of real transformation and change in that particular space. Ma, and besides uh, uh, the issue of inequalities, I mean, uh, your, 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 your case studies, um, I mean, uh, your on-the-ground work, what have you discovered to be some of the more prevalent challenges that are faced by women across board, uh, not being specific to, uh, to race? Well, I must say, discrimination continues against women across the board. How do we address these? The issue of, of abuse across the board, it's very, very rife. So what we've got to do, we can't just say legislation. Legislation is there, it's good. It's about implementation. Absolutely. The partnership, very key. Making sure that women are self-confident, coming up with various programs. That is why we have dialogues, national dialogues, mm -hmm. in making sure that we reach out to even those simple, ordinary women and start giving them a voice. Mm. We've got to do that. The men themselves have to work with us in making sure that they can assure women that they support them, but they believe and respect them. I hope all men are listening. Ma. I hope they're listening, <laughs> even those in the church. Absolutely. And those who come from the church mm. will make sure that they change that. The other issue which is very critical and key is socialization. The socialization of our boy child and girl child at home, there, yeah. and that's where it starts. Because if you're not going to socialize your boy child and your, ch and your girl child you're to them respect, that they're not equal as they're well. They're not equal. That's what we do as parents, mm. all of mm. us, mm. both mm. mothers and fathers. We are in that space. So we've got to change. It's about how we influence, what kind of teachings we're nurturing our children. As we know, we also as mothers, when a boy child hits a girl, we say, ah, oh, man, don't hit her. She's a girl, you are a boy. So promoting masculinity, mm, 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 it's very, mm. very wrong. And instead of condemning that, because we're also promoting violence in our society. Yeah. It's not only about gender violence. It's also about societal issues. Because we say, if you are a boy committing violence, it's fine. Mm, because mm. you are masculine, you have the right to do that. We've got to change our language. Teach our kids differently change attitudes of our also children by changing the language. Mm. Our language is very wrong. We've got to change how we talk, how to relate to our children, but also how we relate to our colleagues as men, how we talk to women, but also as women, how to talk to men, yeah. how we talk to other women. Our language too must change because if there's no change of language, then the attitudes, the behavior will continue. Mm -hmm. Because if you start relating and being conscious about how we relate, how we talk to partners, how we relate to men, how we relate to women, yeah. that's very, very critical because that's what will shape 
the future. That's what will immediately change attitudes in our society. Ma, we've spoken, I mean, uh, still speaking on the issue of violence. I mean, uh, there's been wide calls. I'm sure you remember during the femicide incidents. It doesn't mean that they are over just because we're not getting widespread reports. But what is the department doing to ensure that uh, the safety of women is, uh, is topping uh, 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 any agenda? And also, where can women go to raise their grievances and their concerns about their safety without becoming a secondary victim uh, to, to, to the situation? Just the first thing I want to say, I'm really happy with Minister Mbalula when it comes to the law enforcement, especially the police, where she's, he's come up and say he's going to lead, he's going to make sure that the police do what they're employed to do, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to violence against women. Yeah. And on the 18th, his call up in Indaba, where we will be participating and talking to the people and to the communities to say, what is it that the, the police and what you need to expect as a woman when you go to report your case? Yeah. I'm very excited about that. But the other issue which we've got to look at is to say, it's not only the police stations which exist. We have uh, offices of social workers. Yeah. Women can go and report their cases when they don't find recourse. Mm -hmm in the police stations or in the police. But not only that, we have various institutions, your legal resource centers are also institutions which have to address and assist women mm -hmm. in making sure that their matters are being handled properly. Mm -hmm. We have shelters, they also women who, and they know of shelters closer to them. They can go and report such incidents without revealing because in that way they can also be protectors. And the last point I also want to say, for us who realizes and experience and observe that, what they need to do is to be whistleblowers. Okay. You don't do whistleblowers on corruption only mm. or whistleblowing mm. on robbery. Also, violence against women, we must stand up and there must be more whistleblowers because we know it, even our neighbors become victims and we keep quiet. Absolutely. If you are quiet, you are their accomplice. Mm. Please let everybody go out. If you observe and realize that a woman is threatened, stand up and fight it, but also be a safe haven for a woman. Absolutely. Ma, on the 9th, uh, you are out in Kimberley for the official uh, Women's Day event. I heard you talking on radio this morning. It's just uh, so, so unfortunate that we're almost out of time, but you outlined a few programs that are basically uh, uh, lined up for the girl child. If you can just give us uh, uh, brief snippets of, of what the girl child can expect in this uh, Women's Month. Well, the girl the child, one needs to make sure that she goes to school and be strong and confident. Mm -hmm. And the other thing... I heard about sanitary pads. The sanitary yeah. pads. They must also fight the blessers mm -hmm. because they're destroying their future. We also have a program of Techno Girl, making sure that the girls' life, they have all the opportunities which exist. These are some of the programs. But the last one which I want to say, it's also making sure that we have national dialogues. We will also be pursuing our dialogues in Kimberley, mm -hmm. making sure that the girl who did not have an opportunity to finalize a school can be further skills to take care of herself, bringing her self-confidence. All right. And your final word to women and men out there as we observe Women's Month. To women all there and all the women, I am going to say congratulations for the women of South Africa recognizing that the whole of August month is about them. And with the various activities which they have, Congratulating, well, congratulations and welcome to that. To the men, please make sure you work with women in partnership and ensure that the rights of women are always protected, but also recognize that women are capable. Mm -hmm. To all other men who have made it their business to fight violence against women, keep up the good work, but make sure that you mobilize more men. We need more men who will be like you. You are the role models. Not in my name, Sonke Justice, Brothers, Brothers for, life. for Life, please keep up the good work. Don't be discouraged. You are doing good work. Mobilize more to create a safer South Africa, a South Africa which is non-racial, non-sexist, prosperous, and for all of us to live in a peaceful South Africa. Mm, ma, happy Women's Month and uh, happy Women's Day ahead of Wednesday to you.
same thank you very much alicia <laughs> happy women's day to you and you. all other women especially the young ones thank you so much well what more can i say that is omar susan shabango she is the minister in the presidency responsible for women she was talking to us about some of the department strides her department strides uh, that have uh, embarked upon to ensure uh, the safety of women the equality of women in the workplace all those issues are brought to the fore and also are topping the topics as we celebrate Women's Month.